Welcome to How the Guest Was Won, Tales from the Trails for Vacation Rental Pioneers. This is your host, Andy Medic, CEO of Stay Attention, former CEO of my own vacation rental management company, Sea Change Vacation Rentals, and most importantly, guest. To thrive as an operator in the wild west of today's vacation rental industry, you must get focused and clear on your brand and revenue strategy. In this podcast, through stories from our businesses and our experience as guests, we'll explore the concepts, challenges, and common obstacles encountered while building vacation rental hospitality brands, regardless of scale. Vacation Home Pioneers, bring your voices, your stories, and join me on the trails as together we tell the true story of how the guest was won. On this episode, as we gather around our campfire, we're going to bring it in for a group hug. That should be very interesting after spending so much time out there on the dusty trails. This episode is all about understanding vacation rentals intellectually versus emotionally. It means getting out of your office and experiencing the product or service like a guest. If you can't put yourself in the mind of the guest, go be a guest. We're calling this episode A Sea of Emotions. A quick reminder before we get started, if you've not already listened to earlier episodes, including our preview episode, I urge you to go back and listen since our seasons run as a complete series and I would be very sad for you to miss out. Welcome, Pioneers, to Episode 6 of our podcast. We covered a lot of ground on the trail in Episode 5, so for today, let's circle the wagons, rest up, and gather around our campfire as I ask you the question, do you know the difference between understanding something intellectually versus feeling it emotionally? Is this a left-brain, right-brain thing? You know the theory that says left brain people are better at logical, analytical, linear, verbal, factual, sequential, and objective processes? Right brain people are considered better at creative, intuitive, artistic, nonverbal, emotional, musical, imaginative, and subjective processes. Gee whiz! Based on this theory, this implies left brained would be intellect and right brained would be emotional. It's interesting then that research shows abilities are strongest when both sides of the brain work together. The strength of the working relationship of both hemispheres, left and right, is the true picture of the brain's function. Brain scans show this in action. Intellect and emotion may occur in specific areas of the brain, but it's the working relationship between left and right sides that determine the true picture of how our brains function. Wow, your brain's reeling both sides of them from this rather highbrow introduction for today's episode on understanding our industry intellectually versus making an emotional connection. <sighs> so let's make this brainiac discussion relative to our vacation rental industry. We all travel, hopefully, at least we're all able to travel. When we do travel, wouldn't we be remiss as operators of vacation home management companies if we did not stay at vacation homes on our travels? Don't misunderstand me. I'm a firm believer in that when it comes to lodging alternatives such as a hotel and a vacation rental, it's not an either-or. There are times when a hotel is more viable for our trip and others when a vacation home is more suitable. So it's never that we must stay in a vacation rental every time we travel, but shouldn't we try to support the industry we operate in when appropriate? So if we all get at some point to stay at vacation rental properties, that assumes we get to swap hats as we change from work mode to vacation mode, or home mode to away mode if it's a work trip. For me personally, I find the experience of booking and staying at a vacation rental property as a guest so much different to that of an operator. It really brings home, no pun intended, 
the shift in needs prioritization when one goes from operator to guest role or property owner to guest role. I brought up the subject of change in roles because it got me thinking about how when you talk about a service in a management or execution role, then it seems like it's an intellectual activity. When you experience a service in the buyer or customer role, it's more subtle, predicated sometimes on things that can surprise the service provider, cause an instant friction between service provider and customer. When we ourselves switch from provider to customer, is there a shift in how our brains or even personality types process information? I thought about how this shift in roles played out at my own vacation home management company. Here's a few examples. Firstly, a dispute between a vendor partner and a staff member over a service performed at a property. Secondly, a property owner arriving for a stay at their own property. And thirdly, an operator, property manager, staying at a property for personal travel. Let's take these examples individually. Firstly, a dispute between a vendor partner and a staff member over a service performed at a property. In this scenario, I would intercede and moderate a conversation directly at the property. Why? Well, firstly, it was hard to get office staff actually out of the office. Especially hard for us since the main office was located on a beach block in the heart of a busy small resort town. Once a staff member found a coveted parking spot, they were very reluctant to lose it. Secondly, my intention of getting everyone out at the property is that not only is it a neutral meeting point, but it's also easier to see context. It's very hard to ignore the guest and the property owner needs when at the property. The change of location for office staff also helps to see the guest and property owner's perspective. Let's take a look at our second scenario a property owner arriving for a stay at their own property. To me, a property owner arrival was a VIP guest arrival, a sensitive check-in but one that should pass muster of our regular guest turnover process, subject to any special requests, just like any regular guest special request. So, assuming there was nothing wrong at check-in and we did not mess anything up, it was a low-stress opportunity to arrange a pop-by to the property while the owner was in town. This gave us a great opportunity, again on neutral ground, to chat about any feedback for the owner from the guest relationship that we handled for them. And then our third scenario. An operator or property manager staying at a vacation rental property for personal use. Major perspective shift. The most radical example of the point I'm making of all three examples. Hold it right there! Let's take a quick breather and recap my point. As an operator, we can understand our business intellectually from our vantage point sitting in our offices, but it's not until we get to a property and see the property through the lens of another viewpoint can we really connect with the business emotionally. There's a theory in Brandon that people fall into one of three categories, head, heart, or hand. Head equals thinking or intellect. Heart equals feeling or emotions. Hand equals doing or action. When we talk about brand strategy, we're really talking about an emotional connection. Heart, not head, and not hand. Feeling and emotions, not intellect and action. This is even more important when we consider the use of our products and services by the end consumer, the guest. Vacations are purely heart, emotional-led experiences. During the booking process, we may be thinking about where everyone in our group will sleep, practical issues such as what sizes are the beds and where they're located in a property relative to bathroom amenities, for example. However, practical elements aside, this is still a vacation we're planning. We want to relax, not work. The experience our brand provides for our guests must be centered around the experience they will have not only at the property we offer up, but also in how we interact with the guest to make their stay as frictionless as possible. When it comes to laying out the elements of our businesses that make up the guest perception of our brand, we must connect emotionally with the use of our products and services. Once you connect, start tracking your guest data and look for patterns. Once a pattern emerges, 
You can script for that in your business systems so that your entire team stays consistently on brand message. My own vacation home management business, as I referred to in episode 5, I eventually developed guides for our property owners. These were directions on how to stock a vacation rental kitchen, furnishing guidance, linens, and so on. For owners already in our management program, I was a little more understanding. Ideally, I wanted all owners to comply right away. While most existing owners did follow my guidance, I would give them a full season to fully comply, to spread the cost on surprise big-ticket items. Also, it's difficult to swap out a key piece of furniture if a guest is already booked expecting that item at the property. I might have tiptoed around the guides for existing owners, but for new owners entering my program, I positioned these guides from day one as requirements for listing with my company. Owners had to comply. I would cover this at the outset of the lead generation sales funnel for new owners and repeat at listing appointments, onboarding, and ongoing feedback from turnover property inspections. I had the data in our reservations database to show the difference in revenue with properties that were set up, aligned with guest use of the property, not owner preference. Despite all of this, there were areas that many owners just did not grasp. One is kitchens. Andy, do I really need a blender or a fish spatula, a balloon whisk, and so on? I would say... Yes, guests do a lot of cooking. The penny would not drop until the owner was at the property trying to prepare a holiday meal, for example. Don't believe me? Next time you stay at a vacation home, try cooking a full family meal. What do you find in the kitchen drawers? Is it sufficient? For me, putting together an inventory list for owners to shop to stock their kitchen equipment was an intellectual activity. I cook a lot at home. I know intellectually what equipment a well-stocked kitchen should have. Then I turned to online guest review sources. I looked at guest complaints and rave reviews. All intellectual work, right? This is how I patched together my kitchen guide, and I did a great job intellectually. Think back to my example of our recent trip to Italy. Remember my experience in Florence? Here's where the emotional side of this comes into play. kitchen in our vacation rental property in Florence was awful. Old broken cabinets, damaged or missing kitchen equipment, items that were in good condition had been put back in cabinets dirty and greasy. The dishwasher had such a bad smell that we could not use it. (sniffs) Oh, that's awful. We really struggled in this property to cook a family meal. That was a huge downer on our vacation at this house. I felt like a failure having put my family in this property. I also learned a lesson the hard way. Never walk barefoot in a kitchen. One of the kitchen drawers was missing a section of the base, and when I opened the drawer, not only could I see my bare feet through the bottom of the drawer, but many items fell out of the drawer, just missing my bare feet. This was my understandable emotional reaction as a guest to what I always considered was an easy intellectual task for the operator. Stock in a vacation rental kitchen adequately. When we returned home from our vacation, as I thought back to our time away, I realized my most cherished memories were not the days that we trekked everywhere sightseeing, even if we had a lovely lunch or dinner out at a restaurant. No, the best memories I have are of shopping together for lunch or dinner that we planned on cooking at the vacation home. When I cook at home, I want the kitchen to myself. When on vacation, I favor the opposite. I love to share cooking with others in my group. It's part of the fun. Then as we all sit around the dining table, enjoying our jointly prepared meal, we laugh, tell stories, and bond well into the late hours. You see, the joy of a well-stocked, well-maintained kitchen, it's not in the equipment. It's in what the equipment allows you to do. 
I've had feedback from some operators when I've mentioned the lack of trust and standards in vacation rental kitchens. I'm often asked if I realize how hard it is to do 100 plus point kitchen inventory inspections during a busy turnover window. And to that, I reply, yes, I do, because I've done it. Just because something is hard, it doesn't mean that we should not do it. Side benefit by doing it, someone may happen on an easier way of achieving the same goal. The goal may be to turn the property efficiently and with no missed items. The purpose of this is not only to give the guest a great experience, but also to build their trust. There is also a competitive edge aspect here. When something is hard, not many people do it because it's hard. Those people, those operators, are making your brand positioning so much easier if you are the one person doing the hard thing for the right reason. Let's shift a little here. I want to plant the idea in your mind that when building our hospitality brands, any brand really, but even more important in the hospitality world, it's most important to try and see things from the perspective of your end consumer, the guest. I know how pompous that sounds, but it's true. Seeing something from the perspective of another requires empathy, and as we saw from our earlier discussion, both sides of our brains, intellect and emotion, need to function together and work in partnership when processing empathy. What then is empathy? Empathy is the ability to put oneself in another's shoes, or, in other words, to see something from the perspective of another. Psychologists recognize five types of empathy. Are you ready for this? Ready, set, go! Number one, cognitive empathy. Intellectually being able to put yourself in someone else's position and see their perspective. It's the least, well, Empathic of all types of empathy, since it's empathy by thought, not feeling. Number two, emotional empathy. Experiencing the emotion of another as if it were your very own emotion. Number three, compassionate empathy. Feeling concern for another and moving to action to mitigate the problem. Number four, somatic empathy. Feeling someone else's pain physically. And number five, Spiritual empathy, connecting to a higher being. Let's set aside spiritual empathy. Of all the remaining four types of empathy, compassionate empathy is most useful in the hospitality industry. Why do you think this is? People who need your empathy need you to understand and sympathize with what they're going through, then help them resolve the problem. Just understanding intellectually, mirroring their emotion or physical pain, It's not enough, especially if it blocks you from providing helpful action. I arrive at a property, and I'm upset because the linens are stained. Haven't you just tell me that you understand my distress? Or seeing that you're such an emotional or a physical mess at the problem as I am, well, that's not going to find common ground with my needs and offer up a much-needed resolution. To simplify these categories of empathy for our discussion, I'll speak to empathy for us as being able to put ourselves in the position of our guests and not only understand their perspective, but also to sympathize with their perspective enough to be moved to action on their behalf to better meet their needs. I'm going to call this type of vacation home management business empathy intermotional empathy, since it's not just a combination of intellectually connecting with how a guest uses and interacts with our products and value-add services, but it's also how they emotionally connect. What in blue blazes is going on? An example is helpful. I personally have very little hair left on my head. Consequently, having a hairdryer at a property is not a big deal for me. You would expect that given I'm a person with no need for a hairdryer, I would have a difficult time connecting emotionally with a guest who has arrived at a property to be disappointed that there are no hairdryers provided. Well, while I cannot connect emotionally with the dismay at not being able to blow dry my hair before going out for dinner, I can connect emotionally with the feeling of not having my needs considered. 
For those operators who do not have hair dryers in each bathroom at their properties, really? These are $20 life-changing appliances. Practice intermotional empathy. Understand intellectually the value to someone with hair being able to blow dry it before a nice day out. Also connect emotionally with the feeling that you did not book a great property since your spouse is upset that they cannot blow dry their hair. Consider how quickly a situation can escalate when a guest is upset. For the sake of a $20 appliance, a vacation can be ruined in that moment and an upset guest begins to lose trust and wonder, what else have you missed? That frustrates me! Recent research on genetics shows a biochemical difference in people's ability to display empathy. The OXTR gene, oxytocin receptor gene, is associated with empathy and love. Oh yeah! Oxytocin is a hormone that promotes love and social bonding in humans. The oxytocin receptor is regulated by the OXTR gene. Changes in this gene can increase or decrease a person's ability to feel empathy. So with a seemingly natural ability to feel or display empathy, it's also interesting to me that experts agree that empathy can be learned. Well, whether that is true or not, I still say, if you cannot put yourself in the mind of the guest, go be a guest. Who then is today's villain? (laughs) If you can display empathy for the guest, then you're well on your way to making the guest the hero of their vacation story. And the converse is also true. Ignore empathy at your peril, else risk being the villain of everyone's story, guest, property owner, and yours. I challenge you, get out of your office, book and stay at a vacation rental property as a regular guest. Then tell me how you feel. Does your emotional and physical experience of our industry's products and services match what you intellectually knew from your perspective as an operator or a property owner? Once I started experiencing vacation rentals as a regular guest, my approach to my own vacation home management company, Hospitality Brand, was forever altered. Empathy is an invaluable tool in our industry. Whether you naturally have this skill or you need to develop it, there's no greater teacher than experience. If you cannot put yourself in the mind of the guest, go be a guest. That is our cue to wrap up another episode of How the Guest Was Won, Tales from the Trails for Vacation Rental Pioneers. What did we learn from our chat today, and what questions have we raised for further discussion? Firstly, we discussed the difference between understanding vacation rentals intellectually versus feeling it emotionally. It means getting out of your office and experiencing the product and services like a guest. If you can't put yourself in the mind of the guest, go be a guest. Secondly, we got a little scientific in a quick diversion into left and right brain thinking. Thirdly, we covered some examples from my own vacation home management company where I figured out the hard way the difference between intellect and emotion. Up next, number four, we got scientific again as we delved into defining empathy, an invaluable skill in the hospitality industry. Number five, We brought it all together to come up with a hybrid empathy for our industry, which I call intermotional empathy. Not just connecting intellectually with the guest use of a property and associated value-add services, but really connecting with the feelings and emotions that guests have. Number six, we ended with a call to action. Let's get out of our offices and experience the product and service like a guest. 
And lastly, number seven, our takeaway lesson from this episode is, if you can't put yourself in the mind of the guest, go be a guest. It forever changed my approach to my own vacation home management company hospitality brand. It will do the same for you. Up next on episode seven, we're getting all peoply. I'll cover the importance of developing an organization chart for your company to grow into. Build it and they will come, a.k.a. build it before you need it. Episode 7 is called Get Organized, Doing It All Without Giving It Your All. That is the sound of another campfire connection coming to an end. I always like to close with a pun in case we got a little too serious with our conversation. So, sun's out, pun's out, here we go. Question, what emotion does a tree feel when winter is over? Answer, (laughs) relief. Until next time, happy trails. If your brand resonates with this podcast and you would like to sponsor this podcast, please get in touch with me through our website, stayattention.com forward slash podcast. If you have an episode topic or a story just bursting to be told, also get in touch with me through our website, stayattention.com forward slash podcast.